As to the news that we saw unfold, Kyle saw it in person. We all watched it last night. The four of us were texting feverishly about it. Peter, your thoughts? Yeah, you know, you mentioned uh, sleepless nights. I've been texting with three different Jets coaches. They haven't slept. Mm -hmm. They haven't slept. Mm -hmm. It's 7 a.m. Eastern. The game. They probably got home at 3 a.m. Three different coaches, different facets of the game, just talking about what happened last night. They had excited about the win, but devastated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Devastated not only for the fans and for the for Rodgers. This guy was so invested all summer and has been a coach for the team and has put everybody under his wing, has been the ideal veteran leader. And like that, it's gone. There's something so New York about this. And I'm going to go back to a legendary New York comedian in Woody Allen. If you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Mm. That's a Woody Allen quote. Yeah, if yeah. you want to hear God laugh, the Jets had these plans. They had the, the intro. It's almost ghastly humorous if you look back on mm -hmm. the whole buildup this summer and how quick it was. Four snaps. We never saw Aaron Rodgers complete a pass with the New York Jet. Mm -hmm. And yet, they win the game. They've got a guy who they once valued so much that they drafted second overall. The team has one of the best defenses in the league. They just beat Josh Allen. There is a silver lining to this, um, but it's devastation. And if you're a Jets fan, it's hard not to look in the mirror and say, mm. why? Why does this have to happen this way? Like, is there, can we not have nice things? Right. The answer is he's a 39-year-old quarterback mm -hmm. who was brought in and snapped his Achilles. And that's what we're saying reportedly happened. We'll get the full MRI, but that's what it sounds like. And it's happened before to other quarterbacks. It's happened to a lot of weekend warriors before. Mm -hmm. it, the human body can be cruel sometimes. And this one is its not, not a laughing matter. And yet you look at it 30,000 feet from the air and you're like, gosh, God is just laughing at us sometimes. It's sick. Like, it's yeah. sick. sick. And, this, and this is how sick it goes. Yeah. Um, after the amazing intro, the flag being planted, uh -huh. like that, it's Minutes over. Minutes later. Uh -huh. it, it's, it's incredible. And yet... There's still 16 more weeks to play. Yeah, I think everybody was watching at home in disbelief of what just happened. Like, you went on social media and everybody was just kind of stuck in that moment. As I'm watching last night and Rodgers gets up, when he sat back down and kind of rocked back and then just sat up, it was just like, my goodness. And I, you look at that and I, what Robert Sala said, I'm not worried about myself. I'm not worried about the team. I really feel for Aaron. And as an athlete, you put so much into your craft, so much into training in the offseason, so much into mental. I think that's the one thing we always hear from Aaron Rodgers. And whether you agree with him, disagree with him, his mental approach to the game and how he said manifestation and different things of that nature, everything he's done this offseason to get to this moment, switching teams from Green Bay for so long to the New York Jets. And we are so excited to see what the journey was going to look like and in a split second next thing you know you're injured you're possibly out for the season you're in a surgery room and you're rehabbing and now you're trying to make decisions and look forward to what's next for me and a day before you're planning out the next 18 weeks of your life of playing a football game week in and week out and preparing. Mm -hmm. So I hurt for him, but I do hurt for the guys in the locker room because when you have a leader and a guy as talented as Aaron Rodgers, you look to him so much. And when you see that image of him down on the ground, when you see him limping off of a cart, it is tough yeah. to continue because you know what he's been through because you've been in the locker room next to him all summer. So that was a tough one to go. When you see the stars in our league go yeah. down, you know the impact that it has. I'm standing in the corner of the end zone. Man, that place was awesome. It was really, really special. I've been in a lot of stadiums. I'm not naive. I get it. The, the view, the see, earlier in the evening, there was a giant rainbow that was coming down. Yeah. It was 9-11. This is just me shooting on my phone. I was shooting. This is not the play. This is a couple of plays beforehand. This is right where I'm standing. He goes down, and I'm standing that, you know, they have the, one of these giant flags, and all these first responders are holding the flag. He goes down, gets up, goes back down. I'm standing next to a firefighter, a New York firefighter, and the guy turns to me and goes, he's done. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, he's done. He's like, he's, he's done. I'm telling you right now, he's done. And I'm looking at it, and I text you guys, and I'm like, I think that's an Achilles, and I'll, I'll tell you why later. But it, it was so sad, and let me tell you why. I, uh, the, the evening was really strange because there was bizarre weather in New York last night and there was these storm warnings and shelter in place and all that. So a ton of people got to the game late. I left about 10, 15 minutes after the injury. And as I'm leaving MetLife, there's a lot of people coming in. Yeah. All right. I walk past, this breaks my heart. I walk past these, uh, it was a mom and a dad and three boys. All five of them had on number eight Jets jerseys. All five. And they're going into the game and they don't know. 
They don't know. They're walking into the game. Two minutes later, I walk past this crew of just bros, and they're, and they're Jets fans, and they're all chanting, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, they've been tailgating him, and they're all, they don't know because everybody's showing up late to the game, and they had no so fast, clue. Too. No clue. And the first few plays. So it, it was heartbreaking. Aaron Rodgers is the single most interesting player we have in this league. I don't care what you think of him or him as a player. He's a fascinating piece of, of content, something we talk about. And, it, I mean, it's, it's, he's not going to play this year, guys. Like, I, let me just put the cards on the table. If you don't know, I ruptured my Achilles on camera for the show. We were shooting a commercial a few years ago. I had a full Achilles rupture. This whole thing about they fear it might be, it's not a thing. They know immediately. I've talked about this this week. Let me explain how this works. If they think you ruptured your Achilles, they lie you down on the table, on your, on your stomach. They squeeze your calf, and if your foot doesn't move, it's gone because the tendon is ripped. They do it on the field. It takes five seconds. There is no miracle MRI. Every doctor worth the salt knows that you squeeze the calf, and if the foot doesn't move, we got a rupture. It's that fast. I had surgery on my Achilles, and I said to the doctor, I said, is this common as you see people like me? He goes, my whole office is built on 40-year-olds playing sports. Here's Aaron Rodgers, going to be 40 this year. He tries to evade a sack like he's done thousands of times. It's gone. He, he will, listen, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a trainer, I'm not an insider. I don't think he's playing football again this season based on what I've seen, based on what I've been through, and I feel terrible about it. Well, to your point, I was going to compliment the mental fortitude it must have taken for everyone on that Jets sideline. Robert Sala must have known. Minutes later, he had it yeah. on his face. Mm -hmm. It must have gotten to him whenever they took him back to that table and did that very simple test. There was a decision that was made, I believe, and I know it's hard to not have people whisper and not have trainers come out, but I think a decision was made to go with the x-rays were negative statement, and that was that, yeah. to not impact the emotional well-being of this team that was still on the field. Like, you almost needed to have this flicker of hope, I think, if I was a player on that field, that if we get through this one, we might have him. If we can get through this one, want to mm. know, he might be coming back. Sala knew, bigger people knew, but the team didn't have to know until they had to know. And unfortunately, maybe after that game finished and the, and the elation was gone, then the news hit them and the reality set in. But I think a decision was made that they didn't want to tell anybody until because they needed the mental fortitude because I think it would have taken the air out of them even more than it did, even more than it did the stadium. It says, the mental a, lot of, fortitude. It says a lot about that locker room and that coaching staff that they lifted the team up. It could have been yeah. very easily 34-0, like we just lost yes. Rodgers. Somehow they win the game, which we haven't even discussed about the actual right. football that followed because we're in this situation about Rodgers. But like, yep. you come out of that this morning, you're like, that's as bad as it could have gone. And we, yet... They won. Yeah. We want to know. Are we going to get the Dick Vermeil speech from you today, Peter? He usually gives this. We will rally that. around Zach Wilson when Trent Green got hurt. It was Kurt Warner. We'll get into all the football, I promise. Yeah. Yeah. They can win games with Zach Wilson. Can they get to the playoffs? I don't know.